Kazuma's fight against Kyoya Mitsurugi was much more brutal in the novel than in the anime. Generally, due to time constraints, the anime left out or significantly shortened many things during the raid. For example, Kazuma triggered the alarm in the treasure chamber when he took an item that I'll call a magazine, which rhymes with the Pokémon Entei. But especially the fight against Mitsurugi was a whole lot more brutal than portrayed in the anime. In the light novel, he did freeze Mitsurugi's sword just like in the anime, so he couldn't draw it from the sheath. He then launched a water attack as well. However, it was much, much more brutal. First of all, he didn't just bend over Kiyoya and then use water. He basically injected the water directly into Kiyoya's mouth, so his mouth, throat, and presumably his lungs filled with water. Which is not a nice thing to do for obvious reasons, but the hard part came afterward. He cast the freeze spell again, but this time to freeze Kiyoya's mouth and throat shut. Since ice expands, the ice plug was so tightly sealed in his mouth that he couldn't get it out by hand or simply spit it out. So, let me reiterate Kyuya's situation at that point. He had water in his lungs, and his mouth was frozen shut and sealed by Kazuma. Then Kazuma cold-heartedly told Claire and the others that they had to decide. Either they pursue Kazuma and the silver-haired boy, or they help Kyuya, who was currently drowning on dry land. Something that wouldn't even happen to Aqua. This is precisely the mix of brilliance and ruthlessness that I love about him. He simply goes through with it and uses tactics and strategies that send chills down the spines of even the most hardened demons, which is a thing that actually happens later in the novels as well. And I think it's a shame that the anime softened it so much because this was much more of a clear defeat and near-death experience for Kyuya than a light bit of waterboarding. After draining half the palace guard of mana, Kazuma just surprised and defeated a real hero with a cheat item, high level, and incredible skills who knew about his primary strategies, within seconds thanks to quick thinking. Compare that with his embarrassing death by kobolds in the previous episode. Additionally, and I want to emphasize this here, Claire really tore into Kazuma in the novel, portraying him as the useless failure in the group of four. The same thing that Dust did shortly before the team swap made him realize how wrong he was. Generally speaking, Claire and many others think that Kazuma is more or less the pathetic tag-along who was simply dragged along and carried by Darkness, Megamin, and Aqua, people with extremely powerful classes, and not the one who actually saves the three from themselves. That's why it's so great to see Kazuma teaming up with Chris and completely acing a legacy dungeon for once, and how he just defeated Claire with one attack. After the first attempt to take Claire's sword ended in an absolute disaster for Darkness, and, let's call it, a consolation prize for Kazuma. That's also why Kazuma had to bite his tongue to avoid saying that he was actually the thief who practically cleared the palace on his own, because Claire suddenly became so enthusiastic about him as his thief persona after always putting him down. Lastly, maybe one more thing about Chris as a character, or rather, the inspiration behind her. Some of you will surely know the Fire Emblem series, and before the series became a waifu simulator with strategy elements, there was the 2007 installment Radiant Dawn, the sequel to Path of Radiance. These two highly enjoyable games had a story more akin to an anime Game of Thrones than a typical hero's tale. In it, the characters Soda, a thief, and Micaiah, the girl of the silver light with silver hair who could perform miracles and later served as the avatar of the chaos goddess Yoon, seemed to be the inspiration behind the character Chris, the alter ego of Eris. Just like Micaiah, Chris is also an avatar of a goddess, and blended together, Soda, who is also a thief, and Micaiah more or less form Chris's character design. In general, the Fire Emblem series has influenced many modern isekai stories, which can also be seen in examples like Mushoku Tensei. But that's just a side note. Okay, bye.